everyone, it's Christina from the DIYMommy.com and today I want to try to make some anthropology inspired tie dyed items. So I am loving the dyeing trend, whether it's dyeing fabrics for clothing or dyeing fabrics for home decor. And someone that I think does this fabulously right now is Anthropology. They're one of my favorite retailers. However, their stuff is quite pricey. If I do buy anything from there, it is in that sales closet or on their 40% off sale online when they have that. So today I thought it'd be fun to try out some dyeing techniques with you guys and see how they turn out. I don't know, we're gonna see what happens. Today's video is of collaboration with the fabulous Christine of Admits the Chaos. She is a fellow Canadian blogger and I think you will love her just as much as I do. Hi everyone, it's Christine from Amidst the Chaos. We are a family lifestyle channel here on YouTube and we talk about tips, tricks, and hacks for life, home, and everyday adventures. We're so excited to be partnering up with Christina from the DIY Mommy to bring you this anthropology hack collaboration. I'm so excited to see what she's gonna do. Once you're done watching this video, I'd love it if you headed over to my channel and what we're gonna be doing is taking wicker trash cans and upcycling them into beautiful raised plant stands. I can't wait to see how it turns out. We'll see you soon. So make sure to watch Christine's video after you watch my anthropology inspired DIY video today. Let's get started. I'm using this one step tie dye kit by Tulip. I found it on Amazon. Also using this writ dye in the color denim blue. I have a Turkish towel found on Amazon along with some flower sack towels on Amazon. I got this t-shirt in a slub cotton from the gap. I think it was only like $8. And then I have this Turkish towel style robe that I found on Amazon as well. I love the style of this, the hood, the fringe, everything also found on Amazon. I'll leave links to everything in the description box below. Macrame cord was from Amazon as well. The first item I loved on the Anthropology website right now are these wall hangings. And you guys know that I love macrame and dabbling in it every now and then. And I thought the great thing about these wall hangings were that they had that dip dye effect at the bottom, which I thought would be pretty straightforward to recreate. I also really liked this dip dyed tea from Anthropology. So the peachy pink dip dye at the bottom hem of this t-shirt was really cute. I thought along with the blue version, kind of that indigo color, which I thought was very similar to the denim blue color of Rit dye that I had purchased. So loving that, both of those items quite expensive. I also liked the stripe dyed beach towel. I thought I could use that Turkish towel and recreate this look with some dye. I like the lighter and the darker versions of this as well. Again, on the pricey side, and I thought I could recreate it with an inexpensive Amazon Turkish towel. Another item that I liked on Anthropology Now is this beautiful dip dye dress. And this was an inspiration for the dip dye look that I'm trying to do here in these uh, DIYs. So I thought I would start by opening up the package of the dye, of course, and reading all the instructions thoroughly. I did do some research online as well before I tried this out. Opened up the dye and put it into a large bucket of warm water. I just got this bucket at the dollar store. I'm mixing it up with a scrap piece of dowel. I thought I'd start with the uh, flower sack towels because they're smaller and less expensive than the rest of the things. And what I'm doing is I'm just dipping the towel about halfway up into the dye and I'm bobbing it up and down. Then after about a minute, I moved it up a couple inches and I did the same thing, bobbing it up and down. And the reason why I'm bobbing it up and down instead of just holding it is I don't want a straight line um, in this dip dye look. Repeating the steps again, lifting it up a couple inches and bobbing it up and down. Then afterwards I took it out of the dye and I rinsed it in some hot water in my studio sink and this is how it looked wet. Then I'm taking another one of those flower sack towels and I wrapped some elastic bands around it every few inches. I put it right in that deep dye in the bucket and then I removed all of the elastic bands and opened it up and I really loved how this one turned out. It looked really cool and very boho chic. So then after that I put both of these uh, towels into my washer and my dryer just on the quick cycle and they did lighten up quite a bit. Here's how they looked after. Obviously I need to iron them but I did like how they turned out. They were a little more subtle than I thought so I think if you were to recreate this look you could probably put them into the dye longer than I did. 
Next, I'm gonna try to make that wall hanging. So I just found a tutorial here on YouTube on a simple mini wall hanging. I'm gonna leave it in the description box below. She did a really great job on walking me through how to recreate this wall hanging. And what I liked about this pattern was that it used only a couple of very simple macrame knots. So it uses a square knot and then it also uses a half hitch knot. So basically I'm creating a triangle with square knots going from the top to the bottom of my macrame piece and then finishing it off with half hitch triangle pieces on either side. I just taped the uh, dowel that I'm using for my piece to my island just so it's easier for you guys to see, but you could also use a curtain rod like I've done before to make your macrame piece uh, or a pipe or something like that. So here's the half hitch part that I'm doing. Again, I'm gonna link to this down in the description box below because uh, this channel has the full tutorial for you. And uh, I thought it was a pretty simple one. And then after I made the piece, I just uh, unrolled the bottom of my macrame cord to make it nice and fringy. I trimmed it off. There was kind of one piece that was a bit too short. I don't know what happened. And then I took a scrap piece of my macrame cord and tied it on either side of my dowel on the top of my piece like this so that I could hang my piece on my wall later. So I thought this turned out pretty cute. I liked the size and scale of it. And then I just dipped the bottom in my denim blue writ dye, just like I'm doing here. Again, I'm bobbing it up and down because I don't want that really hard line. I want a softer line so it looks like I dipped this in. So here's the effect and I'm just kind of straightening out all the fringes and letting it dry and here's how the dried piece look. Now I didn't wash this one in my washer after because it's fragile and I do like the darker blue that I was able to achieve because I didn't wash it. I think this is a super cute piece for summer. Okay, next I'm trying out a t-shirt. So I basically did the same thing as I did with my flower sack towel where I'm just bobbing it into the dye at different levels. And here's how this one turned out. I didn't mean for the top to get blue. I wanted it to be white. I don't really know what happened. The dye kind of leaked up into the t-shirt and then I washed it in the washer and the dryer and the effect was a little more subtle than I was hoping for and I wanted that pure white on the top. But overall, I think this turned out a nice and casual and comfy and cute for the summer. Okay, now I wanna try that other dye kit. Now this is more of a kid's dye kit. You just add water to these bottles and then you just squeeze them right onto your piece. So I wanted to do a dip dye effect with a different sort of technique on the bottom of my robe. I was kind of freaking out at this point because it looked like I had just maybe exited a murder scene if I was to wear this, but uh, I was hopeful. And then after I squeezed that bottle of dye all over the bottom hem of my robe, I took a paintbrush and put a ton of water on it and basically dragged the dye from the bottom up so that I would get a dip dye look effect. So again, at first I wasn't quite sure what was gonna happen with this and was a little concerned that I wrecked one of my favorite house coats. But then after a while I could see that this might turn out and I did like the dip dye effect that I achieved with this method. So after washing and drying my robe in my uh, clothes washer and dryer, here's how it turned out. Super subtle. All dyes really lighten up when you wash them and dry them in the washer and dryer. And I liked the subtle effect and the pink was pretty cute. Finally, I wanted to try that other dye set, but I wanted to do the beach style blanket. So I'm using the Turkish towel that I found on Amazon, using one of these bottles of dye and squeezing it all over the top of this towel. I also tied some rubber bands on it in about six, seven inch intervals. And I kind of ran out of dye, so I got this more splotchy watercolor effect, which I thought could look neat. So I just ended up kind of rubbing the dye around with my hands at the very end here. And then after I did that, I uh, took the bands off and I washed and dried this piece. Now this one turned out quite a bit lighter than I thought. And also the stripes did not work with this type of squirt bottle dye. So if you wanna do the stripes, I would definitely recommend to use the writ dye that I did at the beginning with the green uh, sack towels that turned out better. This turned out more like a watercolor effect all over my uh, blanket or my beach towel. But overall, I think it turned out pretty nicely. Thanks 
so much for watching my video today. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know down in those comments below what you think of the finished products. Would you try this technique? What would you do differently? I would love to know. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more DIY and home decor ideas on a budget. I'm going to leave a bunch more videos right up here for you to try out next.